and welcome to my little space. My name is Jenny. I was born and raised in Australia. As of right now, I live in Shanghai, China. I moved here to pursue my dream in working in the entertainment industry, being an actor. So now I do work at a radio station at KFM 98.1, and I'm trying to make my strides as an actor as well. 大家好，我是周杰妮，我是澳大利亚出生长大的一位 ABC。然后为了自己的梦想，追求我的梦想，我搬到上海来。然后我也是最近刚刚在上戏毕业。所以今天就是再给大家介绍一下我自己。我现在也是在电台上面 KFM 九八，然后也是在演一些小的角色啊，锻炼锻炼自己，因为还是想当一位演员。So today I thought I'd answer some of your questions and we can get to know each other a little bit better. So please let me know down below as well where you're from, what you do, what your dreams are, what you're chasing at the moment, what your goals for the year are, and I would love to read them all as well. Hopefully we can inspire each other as well a little bit. Otherwise, let's get into the questions. One of the most popular questions. That I got was, where are you based now? Are you moving to LA? Will you be moving to the states for your career? So recently, I've been to LA twice.、Um, I wanted to go see if I could find a manager or agent. So the original plan was that I would go to LA in 2019 for pilot season, which is about. Busy from February to April, which is when all the new TV series have their kind of test episode called the pilot, which is why a lot of series, if you watch it, episode one is always called the pilot. So obviously, the dream would be if your episode gets picked up by the networks and they want to make a full season or a half season or something. I was not expecting to go and land a role or whatever. I just wanted to go and practice because as of right now in Shanghai, I'm getting like three to four auditions per year, and like for me, I don't think that's enough because. In San Jose, I feel like I'm already in the gang. Like I'm sitting here doing nothing. Now that I've graduated, I just wanted to go there、um, and see if there were more auditions so I can practice and just grow a thicker skin and see what the industry is like. Because I'm already in the gang. Like I'm sitting here doing nothing. Now that I've graduated, I just wanted to go there and see if there were more auditions so I can practice and just grow a thicker skin and see what the industry is like. Industry is like over there because ever since I was younger, I did want to go to LA, and I feel like if I don't go now, I'll never go. So back to am I moving or not? I didn't expect to get a manager、um, so quickly. So now that I do have one, they do want me to go over more often. They do say that I can't keep leaving LA because I might pick up momentum, and then as soon as I leave, then it's gonna drop down again. So. I don't really know right now. I don't want to say that I'm moving because I still want to do my stuff in Shanghai. It's just kind of my. It's a bit of a mess right now. Even I don't know the answer. But what I am gonna give myself is six months and to make a semi stride. My mom has given me six months as well. Um, from probably next year January to July ish, and we'll see how it goes. If nothing happens, nothing happens. Hopefully, I can just get some good practice in and just kind of get it out my system. Because, like I said, if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. So I just have to go and do it. Another question regarding LA is: So you're signed with a company in LA. Can you elaborate your acting career between two countries? The beauty of it now is that people are doing a lot of self tapes, which means I can audition for things all over the world. If there's a self tape for a Chinese show, I'll do that as Well, or if I'm in China and there's a self tape for a show in America, then I can do that as well. So it's gonna be messy, but hopefully it works out, and hopefully there's also a lot of self tapes. But obviously it's a big audition and it's worth it. Or they want to see me in person, then I'm more than happy to fly back to wherever they are to properly audition face to face. At the moment, I'm not seeing it as a big issue because obviously I don't have any jobs at the moment and I'm not acting anything.、Uh, get back to me when maybe I actually land the job in. The near future, or who knows when I will. Next question is, who's your favorite celebrity that you've met so far? So I've been lucky enough,、um, whilst working at the radio station and hosting some events, that I've met with some very famous, very talented people.、Um, probably one of the people that I never thought I would meet would be Kendall Jenner. So we met her at the Adidas event, and I got to slightly interview her a little bit. It was amazing. But I think my most favorite celebrity that I've met for work purposes would be. Zed. Even though, like, I wouldn't say that I'm the biggest Zed fan, but it was just the best interview ever. He gave us a really, really long time, and with every answer, he like stared straight into your eyes. So you really felt like you had a really good connection and a really good conversation going on. Me and my friend Iris were there, and we were just like, oh my gosh! After the interview, we felt like he stared straight into our soul. This one is hello. 毕业后的人生规划 is that 规划是什么呢？打算在哪里追模？ So, uh, you know, wherever there is a dream to chase, the, that's where I will be. When and how did you start your radio broadcasting career? So I actually never thought about being a radio host before. I've always loved listening to the radio on the way to school. We would always listen to Matt and Joe on Fox FM. When I was in first year uni, we had a Taizi 老师 which is like. 
speech, pronunciation, and he had a lot of friends in the Shanghai Media Group radio station. And he heard that they were opening up a new Western music channel, and he thought that I would be a great candidate for it. So I went and I auditioned, and then I interned for two months, and then I was the first batch of hosts for that station, which is now KFM 98.1. So I kind of fell into it, and then with hosting gigs that kind of came with it, it's really cool because those brands often have listened to my show or listen to my show all the time. So, so very lucky to kind of just have fallen into that. This one's coming from Weibo. It is 怎么练成三亿五轮转什么街道法的 I will learn how to pronounce those words later. Let me know if you know how to pronounce those words that I just skipped over. As you can see, my Chinese is still not great. So I think they're referring to my radio show. It's called the San Yu Show because I do it in Shanghai, Shanghainese, Pudonghua, Mandarin, and I do it in English as well. So how that began was also accidental. When I was interning at the radio station, they would make me record demos of shows, just like "Good Morning Shanghai," "Welcome to the Blah Blah Show," and just kind of make up a fake radio show in Mandarin. And I really, really. Struggled with that because my Mandarin was really, really bad. So the boss said, "Whatever words you don't know in Mandarin, you can use Shanghainese. If you don't know it in Shanghainese, you can use English." So I learned to kind of just switch around, and then I found out that people actually like the switching around. So now I can probably like switch all three in one sentence. For example, if I was saying Taylor Swift is coming to Shanghai and she's going to perform her new album, I'd be like, 最近的好消息就是 Taylor Swift 又跑到阿拉上海来了，然后她会有一个非常大的 concert and it's going to be absolutely amazing， 会非常。的精彩 ，so kind of something like that. I don't know if people actually understand what I'm saying, but they enjoy it. Perhaps they just think they're listening to gibberish all day. But if you love it, great. So this one's from Weibo as well. Your grow up experience. How your family moved to Australia and did you come across any language trouble? So my parents immigrated in the late '80s. I think there was a really big batch of Shanghainese people moving there, and they wanted a kind of just different life,、um, and they wanted a different life for their child as well. So I was born and raised in Australia, Melbourne, up until I was 19 years old, which is when I moved back to Shanghai to study at the university at Shanxi. And language troubles? Yes, I did do Chinese for VCE. I was okay. I wasn't the best. But we could use the dictionary, so I really relied on the dictionary, and I thought my Chinese would be all right. But when I got here, oh my gosh, it was so hard. I couldn't even order a bowl of noodles. I didn't realize that everyone in China kind of had. Different Mandarin accents as well, because there's a lot of different dialects and different provinces in China, and they all speak Mandarin a teensy bit different. So I was having the hardest time understanding everyone, because I thought I could just get around by speaking Shanghainese. But now Shanghai has people from everywhere, so it's kind of hard. If you can speak Shanghainese in Shanghai, you can't really use it as much anymore. So yes, I did come across a lot of language troubles. Another question is, 你的中文怎么那么好呢？就是逼出来的，你就是要天天练。我是在电台的时候逼出来。因为第一年我在大学的时候，什么都听不懂，什么都说不出来。我差不多就是不说话的。你可以看到我现在那么爱说话，但是因为我太害羞了，然后就是。很害怕说错，你不要害怕说错，说错还是比不说好。因为如果你不说出来，谁知道你会说错呢？你只能这样子说错，犯错误才会学得更好。So just don't be scared, go for it, speak a bunch of gibberish, and hopefully one day you master the language and people will try to stop. So and hopefully one day you will master the language and people will start to understand you. Another question: 我如果想去中国学表演，我的中文水平需要多高？短说我就觉得是应该蛮高的，因为这里有很多老外在我们学校，他们的普通话比我还好啊。就是因为我的普通话没有那么好，我还要再补课，然后天天台词老师还要再帮我啊做一些发音的练习，所以我觉得我也是花了很多时间去练习中文，学习中文。然后表演的话，当然你要看台词啊，你要看剧本，然后我。就看得非常的慢，但是你要很努力的在学。我现在看剧本，我还是觉得很困难，我还是很多字要好好的去写下拼音，然后去查字典怎么去说。所以你的中文水平越高越好，但是如果没有达到那个标准，你可以跑到这边来，也是很努力的去学习，然后把自己的标准提高一点。Hello, how old are you, and what did you study at university? So I'm 24 years old. I was born in 1994, and I studied in Shanghai Theatre Academy. I did a Bachelor of Arts、um, for musical theatre acting. Okay, what is the acting industry in China like? I feel like I can't really give you a great answer for that one because I. 
don't feel like I'm in the acting industry but it is very different when it comes to kind of ma how managers and agents work so in China I think they still follow the studio system I'm not sure if that's the right term for it where if you want to be part of a film that a production company has produced you kind of have to sign to their agency so it's kind of like everyone's in this one big family so the writers the production the actors are all together so it kind of keeps all the money together as well the agencies here are a little bit more intense you sign contracts for like five years ten years they take a lot more commission but they also do a lot more for you um, they follow you to your auditions they make sure you get your headshots they really push you so they do take a lot more commission but they're with you like every step of the way as well whereas agents in Australia and America they kind of just like send you an email you go yourself you get your headshots yourself you pay for those yourself as well but the commission they take is much lower so it's very different approaches and and um, I think in Australia and America you could probably freelance quite easily but in China I don't think you can really freelance so if you want to be in movie A you have to be in movie A's production company's agency does that make sense? Would you want to be an actor one day? If yes, what kind of movie? My dream ever since I was young was to be an actor. Um, what kind of movie? I really wanted to be Mulan and the live action remake of Mulan because I knew it was going to happen one day. Obviously that ship has sailed. What kind of movie now? There's this book that I loved as a child called Chinese Cinderella and Autumn Leaves. If they ever make that book into a movie, I would just love to be a part of it in any way possible because I grew up reading that book and my mom always said I look like the little girl <laughs> in the blur cover so I know I'm like way too old to do that role now but maybe one day when I'm older I could be her like evil mum or something how tall are you and are there requirements as in height for the entertainment industry in China? I'm 1.62 meters which is 5 foot 4. I think for a girl to be shorter is better because on screen acting, for film and TV acting, the girl needs to be kind of shorter than the guy just for aesthetic purposes. And because a lot of guys aren't super super tall, it's always better if the girl is a little bit shorter. But when I was auditioning for Shanghai Theatre Academy, all the girls were super tall but I was also doing theatre acting so everyone was like almost 1.7 I'm the second shortest in my class but everyone who came to audition was basically skinny and tall I don't know why it's like that but I think that's just the general idea or general image people have of an actor or a performer in China have you been to other cities in China for travel like Chengdu or Harbin um, because there's more interesting food there. I've been to a few other cities in China, but mostly for work, so I haven't seen a lot of it. I've been to Chengdu, Shenzhen, Guangdong. Um, I think I've been to, I, oh, like Wuxi, like Suzhou as well, Hangzhou. And like when I was younger, my mom made me go on one of those Chinese tours where you sit in the tour bus and they drive you around all of China and they make you buy like jade and everything. So we did one of those. I can't remember where I went. Obviously, I've been to Beijing as well. Um, but I did actually do, do a proper holiday to Guilin, Yangshuo, and that was amazing like one of the best holidays I've ever had in my life just so memorable it's just one of the highlights of my life I did do a vlog there as well so I'm gonna plug it and I'll say I'll link it down below how do you stay so positive I don't actually think I stay positive obviously when I do like a video or take a photo I'm always smiling and come across very positive but I wouldn't say I'm the most positive person ever I have to actively make sure I'm not thinking of things in the worst way or thinking of things in a really negative way because that just comes to a lot of us really naturally for me, um, to stay positive, I would say I go by this life quote. I don't know if you can apply it to this or not, but I always say expect nothing, gain everything. So that way I won't be disappointed and that way I won't be pessimistic. So I think that kind of helps me stay positive as well. And also just kind of taking control of my life. And if I want to really do something, I'm going to go and do it. Like this LA thing, for example. So yeah. What do you love the most about living in China? I'm gonna kind of localize this into living in Shanghai. I love just seeing the melting pot of kind of the Western and Eastern culture and I love seeing the really classic olden style Shanghai through like the Longdangs and like the Shuobeti and like Taedeng and stuff. And I think also because I'm Shanghainese, just kind of sounds cheesy but going going back to my roots i never imagined that my life would turn out this way but i'm really glad that i have had this period in my life that i have gone back to where my parents grew up and worked and everything and find out more about my culture and also living in china is really good because you're super close to all the holiday destinations like you know japan and like hong kong and taiwan and seoul and like even thailand's quite close by vietnam's quite close by so it's a really good like holiday base location as well do you struggle with being away from your family or have you always just been independent um I wouldn't say I was very independent because I was an only child and my mom really did baby me and look after me super well I don't think I 
ever really thought about the fact that I was leaving my family, moving to a whole new city, whole new country and starting my life again on my own. I think I just did it and it's slowly processed over the years as I've been here. It is hard because I know I'm the only child and my parents will definitely miss me a lot and there's the house will be so quiet because I'm super noisy at home and it just must be really lonely for them as well. It makes me sad when I think that when I was 18, 19 is probably the last time that I will ever live with my parents and I feel like I moved out a little too early. I could have had a few more good years living together with them but now that I'm 24 and I've already lived by myself for like 5 years, I don't see myself moving back in with them. It is sad when I think about that but I'm also super lucky that my parents are very very supportive. They let me do my own thing and they are rooting for me as well. Of course my mom always tells me, she's like, you know, you can always just come back home, open up a cat cafe or I'll buy you a milk bar, you can work in it, you can live on top of it. Sounds like a dream, doesn't it? I'm like, oh yes, mom. What is Kit Kat's favorite treat? Thank you for asking. He loves his morning tuna, obviously, but he only likes a specific type of tuna. If it's too dry, it's not great. If it's too wet, it's not great. So we'll only eat this one brand of tuna. But he also, also loves eating raw beef. So when my dad is like, then you're like in preparation for dinner and he's cutting like little slivers of beef to like do a stir fry, Kit Kat will just sit next to the cutting board, I know it's kind of unhygienic, or he just stands behind my dad and just sits there and waits for my dad to drop him a little bit of meat. He absolutely loves that, so I would say raw beef is his favorite treat. Whew. Okay, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and dropping by on like my Weibo and Instagram to ask me these questions. Do let me know if there's a question that I haven't answered down below and I'll try to answer them in the comments. And let me know a little bit about yourself as well so I can get to know you better. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.